Hey there, my name is Brad. I'm the Harley Davidson Wizard. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Thanks to all the new viewers out there. I'm uh, constantly getting updates that there's new subscribers, and that's really sweet. That really motivates me to keep doing this more and keep putting out cool stuff because that's what we like to do around here is cool stuff. So make sure you like and subscribe. So today we have both kits in for our Harley Davidson Screaming Eagle Big Boar kits. We have a 131 kit that just came in that's in granite and the 128 kit that's probably in black. Actually, actually it has to be in black. So we have the 128 kit and the 131 kit and here they are. So this is going to be the 131 kit. About the part number, it comes in three different boxes. That's definitely going to be the, the cylinders and pistons and cam and all of that business. The cylinder heads and the Screaming Eagle high flow exhaust system. And then over here, we have the 128 kit. Same thing, it comes in three parts. The exhaust system, heads, cylinders, pistons, cams, all that jazz. So what we're going to do, we're going to open both sets of packages and look through the components and see what they look like see what what kind of cool technology harley davidson's putting into these kits you know the actual the hard parts of it and we're going to be having this kit on display up in the showroom two days from now on saturday and this kit we're actually putting on a motorcycle so they both have to come out of the boxes anyways so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to turn the camera off as I open the boxes because I want to be careful that I don't, you know, damage or drop or anything. It's kind of tough to move around the camera, so I don't even want to risk it. So I'm going to turn you off and bring you right back to these open kits and let's take a look and talk about them. All right, we got the 131 kit open, and also the 128 kit. It took longer, a lot longer than I was thinking, but there's a lot of stuff to go over here. So let's take a look. So here we have the whole um, Screaming Eagle 131 kit along with some of the stock parts like the stock cylinder, a couple stock pistons and the stock head. And there's a stock cam and lifter in there so that we can go over that stuff as well. Along with I have a stock head pipe so we can compare the exhaust system that comes with it. And then we also have the 128 kit taken, taken out and we're going to take a look at that. It's basically the same kit, but with slightly different pistons. Let me get you in the tripod and we'll get going. Alright, so the kit comes with new ported heads. We'll get more into that. New uh, cylinder head bolts, gaskets, exhaust gaskets. This kit comes with a fan assisted oil cooler, which is pretty, pretty sweet. It comes with new oil lines and stuff for that. It comes with a new throttle body, a 64 millimeter, I believe. New cam, Screaming Eagle 517, lifters, high flow uh, fuel injectors, new pistons, and new cylinders, and some associated gaskets along with that. Well, let's take a look at the heads. There's some pretty cool stuff going on with them. It has a Screaming Eagle badge, which is alright, but it also has this really sweet like engraved Screaming Eagle logo, which is a new style logo that Screaming Eagle, Screaming Eagle parts have been having like on their uh, new slip-on mufflers that are actually pretty nice. It has that same matching logo. It has a pretty dope Stage 4 badge on it. This is the front cylinder head and it also has a matching Screaming Eagle engraved logo on it. And then just from the top, we can already tell that it comes with the high lift valve springs on it. Let's see if you can see the difference in them. A stock one versus a high lift valve spring. A little bit different. You can kind of tell that there's less coils in the high lift one. So it wouldn't go into coil bind. Let's see if it'll focus on ports of it. A lot of work has been done to port it. 
like the catalog says that they're CNC ported. Keep on hitting the camera here. Jeez. CNC ported. And Screaming Eagle says that this finish, well, Harley Davidson Corporate, you know, Screaming Eagle, that jazz. They say that this slightly rough surface, I guess I wouldn't say rough, like it's almost smooth to the touch, but that this promotes flow. That's the intake. And then the exhaust. You can see how well it, it's like transitioned together. And that is, you can get a lot of air through those two big, big valve hole, holes. Yeah. And here's the intake port. You can tell it, it hasn't been worked over nearly as much as the CNC ported. There's a lot more going on in the combustion chamber than I was thinking, but we'll get to that. And here's the exhaust side of a stock 114 or a Screaming Eagle 117 cylinder head. So let's flip them over and we'll get a better, better look at the port stuff. But before we get there, let's look at the throttle body difference. Like right there, you can really freaking tell the big difference of the 64 that it comes with. I think it's massive, like absolutely massive compared to the stock one. And it comes with this high flow aluminum intake manifold, I guess. Yeah, it'd be the intake manifold. And it has these little like directional pieces in here. I'm sure that's all for promoting flow, but it's a pretty nice smooth surface in there really for a cast part. They sell this part separately so you can just add it to your regular 114 or 117. It doesn't need to be a stage kit, but it's nice being a actual cast piece rather than the plastic one. Just, I don't know, because but big differences there big time and also the fuel injectors it comes with high flow fuel injectors so this is the stock fuel injector let's see if it'll focus in there See if I can do it like this. Get fancy. See if I'll have a better time focusing. So the stock fuel injector has a lot of little holes around the circumference. Uh, let's see if I can count them. Looks like eight maybe eight little holes for the high flow fuel injector it has four really big holes AVE always does this I don't know if it works there's another YouTube guy but it's hard to tell through this little GoPro camera probably isn't working but the high flow fuel injector it has four big holes in the center of it where the stock one has eight small holes around the circumference of it. Cool little, little touches. Oh yeah, let's get back to the... Let's get back to the combustion chamber. Here's like where you can really tell all the difference. So you can tell this is the stock cylinder head where it kind of has, I don't know if you call this a kidney bean shape, combustion chamber or whatever, where it's round and round and then it kind of just has like a flat edge. It's quite a bit different than the CNC ported head over here where it still has the same arc here, but it's a much more gradual rolled edge. And we'll see 
Actually, let's look at it right now. So the pistons that come with the 131 kit, you can see it has that exact same shape in the top of the piston with a little bit of a dish. I'm sure that's for power. That way that once the piston comes up and you're squeezing it, then it puts all the power right here in the center of the piston and push it down, right? Seems like it would make sense. Where the stock, this was this is a Screaming Eagle 117. So it comes with essentially like a flat top. It's got this little bit of a dome here in the center, but you can tell it it's it has a little baby valve reliefs. It's all right. But also the Screaming Eagle head has one millimeter larger valves in it. You can kind of see, let's see if I can get you in closer. Yeah, so the Screaming Eagle has one millimeter larger valves. I think it's both valves, the intake and the exhaust. I'll have to double check that. But it's definitely the intake. And you can see how it has like a nice smooth blended radius here. So that a little bit of air can still come around that corner. And it's not obstructed. We're on the stock head. You can see like where it's machine so close to the edge where if you put a millimeter larger valve in here you'd have to like grind out the side of it so a little bit larger valve and you can also kind of tell by the shape of the stock head it's just like a flat surface here and then a flat surface here it's just like a V for your combustion events we're on your CNC ported it has a, a little more shape and uh, let's see if I, a little more shape and dimension around where the actual valves are. Valve pocket, I guess. And also nice smooth transitions into spark plug and ACRs and all of that. There's a lot more going on there than I was thinking there was going to be. Yeah, so I'm sure that the new piston has this matching pocket in here for this exact same shape that's in the cylinder head. You know, make you more power, right? Where the stock one is just a flat, flat top piston essentially on a normal shaped head. But once you start looking at the compi the or once you start looking at the piston design it really couldn't be much more different. This is how all Milwaukee 8 pistons are, where it has like a really narrow piston skirt to it. And then uh, I would say that these are hyper eutectic pistons, but they're definitely a cast setup. And you can tell they're trying to save all the weight on this thing in the world, where they get, you know, get in there and it's kind of thin out here where where the ring lands are and it also comes with a piston pin that is this wide you know obviously it goes in there but we're just gonna put it in here for the time being so then we look at the screaming eagle piston and it's awesome it has a much wider piston skirt and this is where all the stability of the piston comes from going up and not wanting to rock around is all this right here so I like that that looks really good and there I think I guess you'd call that Mahel pistons Screaming Eagle pistons have been made by them for quite a long time now but you can see how much more robust it is down here where the ring lands are a lot more material and then the wrist pin itself is quite a bit shorter. Check that out. So this is the new wrist pin and this is the old one. So it's a lot shorter than the old one. And the old one has a bit of a tapered design. I'm sure that's for weight, weight saving. But the new one's just a thick badass piece of steel. No messing around there. But you can really see it like the thickness that's right around here and the 
it's almost like the opposite in design where this structural component I don't know what you'd call that this part of the webbing or whatever comes towards the inside of the wrist pin where this one goes towards the outside but how much more robust this piston is than this one I believe that this is a forged piston I'm not an engineer so I, you know don't quote me on that but the rest of the forged pistons that come from Screaming Eagle look just like this and I was looking at a set of forged pistons for my LS engine from my hell and they had this exact same kind of like dark uh, gray greenish coating with this uh, anti-friction pad on it and that's one nice thing that I've always liked about this at least the Screaming Eagle pistons and other high quality pistons like if you buy pistons from T-Man or Weissco or whatever they always have a uh, anti-friction coating on it and that's important because obviously you know it's anti-friction so it, it helps to go up and down the cylinder more but you can have a lot tighter cylinder to piston fit when you have a anti-friction coating and that makes the engine a lot quieter a lot less uh, piston slap noise which is a big deal so it's almost not even similar to the stock piston at all it's just a completely different thing also the piston rings that come this is the 131 kit it's a 131 piston they're a little bit wider than the stock 117 I'm just demonstrating that by it, it won't fit into the actual groove just a funny a little difference there but man look at that that is I wasn't expecting to see that fancy of a shape in the top of the piston compared to uh, the combustion chamber but I'm happy to see it and right here you can tell the piston size difference between a 117 and a 131 it's a pretty big deal but it's got big nasty valve pockets for a hot cam this one's a baby one this one's a big dog this is a stock cam out out of this motorcycle it's a screaming eagle road glide but this is how stock cams have been made for a very long time uh, I don't know how long let me think probably since like 2008 I want to say right around there so what we're looking at is it's kind of hard to tell but these lobes are not part of the base camshaft like there's the shaft and then there's little splines on it and then the lobe is like pressed and splined onto the cam which sounds ghetto and I don't know it just gives me a, a funky feeling now I've seen this type of cam go a hundred thousand miles no problem uh, in the older twin cams you know well because twin cams are old enough where people would have a hundred thousand miles on them so it certainly isn't a quality problem it's just a uh, I don't know there's a certain cheapness to it that I'm not really happy about but maybe you can see like the little spline action going on in there which is kind of goofy and it looks like again I'm not an engineer but it looks like this is a soft piece of metal and then they go around and induction hard it I'm assuming induction but harden the outer surface of it you know where a lifter or a cam bearing is gonna ride and then they grind it which there's just so much cheapness going on there you know it's cheap in the material it's cheap in the process it's cheap and it's just cheap all the way around like I said there isn't a quality problem with it it's just it's just the way it is so when we look at the new cam that comes in this kit the screaming eagle 517 you can tell it's a legit made camshaft where you see there's no like parting line in there because this was all made out of one friggin piece of metal and that's the way that you would expect a proper camshaft to be made 
So that's nice. That's a nice touch that. And that's, well, that's basically the whole deal is, so when you buy a stock anything, you know, whether it's a stock car or a stock motorcycle, it's built to a price point, right? Because that's the way business is. But once you buy high performance products, then that whole section of price point kind of changes because now you're buying the best parts available because that's how cool shit is. So that's where we see in the piston, like how much nicer the new 131 piston is than the stock piston. You know, the stock piston does fine, but it's not nearly as nicely made or high quality of product as the high performance piston. And same thing with the camshaft. The camshaft is a much higher quality piece because you're buying it. That's that's basically it. All right. So here are the lifters. This is a, a stock lifter that came out of this 2018 Road Glide. And then the Screaming Eagle lifter that comes in this kit. You can tell the little Screaming Eagle ones identified with Screaming Eagle initials down there on the axle. The rest of the lifter is about the same other than the needle bearings that are on the inside. A stock lifter has a lot of small little bearings in there. I don't know if that's going to show up where the Scrim and Eagle version has bigger bearings and apparently that's supposed to be able to put up with a lot more load. There's also a little bit difference in the roller where the Scrim and Eagle one is kind of like identified kind of like with this like machining groove in there where the stock one doesn't have that. Maybe that's a better angle to get. There you can really kind of see how big those ro rollers are. Scrim Eagle lifters are nice. I'll bring them up in a different topic later. Today we're just talking about the Scrim and Eagle parts. So afterwards, after I fully assemble the engine and do the dyno run, I'll start talking about maybe aftermarket parts and kind of how they might be a little bit better suited in some instances. But today we're just talking about Screaming Eagle stuff. But that's what they come with. Screaming Eagle lifters for the camshaft. Oh, it also comes with a full bearing inner cam bearing. The stock inner cam bearing has probably half as many rollers in it and it has a little cage in it. So the high performance bearing has a lot of rollers, so there's a lot of surface area for it to fit on and roll around on a cam. So there you go. Let's take a look at the cylinders and that's basically about it. Oh, and the exhaust system and the 128 kit. I don't know how I messed this up yesterday. I don't know if I forgot to press record or if somehow it just got this part of the video magically got lost, but I thought it was kind of fun and important, so we're redoing it. So if things look different on the table, that's why, because we came in early Friday to do this part. So hopefully we can fit this back in the video. So let's get going. So yesterday, excuse me, we were talking about how awesome this new piston is. And I was looking online again for new pistons for, for my LS build, and I came back across these uh, Mahel pistons. Excuse me. They were talking about how this uh, green grayish coating is also a uh, an anti-friction coating. But then there's also this other different color in here. And that has something to do with the piston rings being able to like not micro weld or gall up in the in the in that ring land so that's also a very nice touch but basically what we see here is like this is some of the best piston that you can buy really everything about it is awesome and then i was also interested in the piston and cylinder fit yesterday too so rather than measure it and you know just show you the measurements you can hear the difference in the quality 
So this is the information that comes with the 131 kit and the original fit uh, piston and cylinder fit is seven ten thousandths to two thousandths which is really friggin tight but that's awesome because usually when you buy the best stuff the best stuff is made out of the best stuff and when it's made out of the best stuff it has the best properties for that situation so basically what we see here is that this the whatever this piston is made out of it's it's done it in such a way where it has very little expansion because that's a super tight cylinder fit to put that in perspective I went and looked up the cylinder fit for a brand new 117 it's also the same for a 114 like the 114 piston a cylinder fit so when you buy a 114 brand new the piston fit is two and a half thousandths to three basically three and a half thousandths so it's actually like 40 percent tighter or something the cylinder fit with this bad boy and you go all right so what's that really matter you know well it matters because of the piston rock so if you aren't thinking about it the piston goes to the top of the cylinder and then the connecting rod has to change direction so it goes up changes direction and goes back down that also influences the piston where the piston goes up and then clink goes the other way so you can actually hear it let's see so everything is clean and dry here you really shouldn't be putting pistons and cylinders dry but we're being very careful because we don't want to damage anything so listen I don't know if you can hear that but there's just the slightest slightest little movement in there and once you get oil on the side of it the oil takes up all of that clearance so she's nice and tight now let's go over to the 117 and dimensionally this thing isn't uh, it's not like it's out of spec the thing only has 5,000 miles on it I believe but you can hear the difference in the clearance you can hear the added clearance take a listen to it and we're just rocking it back and forth let me get a better grip on her I'm doing a bad job at this there you can use you can actually see that the piston is physically rocking back and forth and you can hear that more so the problem with that is because nothing up here touches the cylinder wall only this part does so the more it rocks is the more wear that you get here the more noise that you hear and then also I'm assuming that the ring seal isn't as good when you have more piston rock because the rings are going like probably perpendicular to the bore to slightly cantered in one direction or another so with the higher quality material and the better parts you get better fits so that's also really awesome to know because at least as as being a Harley Davidson technician, you know, we put the, these kits together and a lot of times vehicles come in for engine noises. And people that have quiet engines don't want to have loud engines after you do engine kits to them. So a lot of times you can find like forged pistons that are just shiny all the way around. And you know, those are cool and all, but they're gonna have a higher piston and cylinder fit. They're gonna have more clearance to them which makes them noisier and then they expand a little bit more with the heat but it's noise and just to put that in perspective so I'm gonna pause we're gonna do a little bit of math so if I did my math correctly the piston goes up and down in the cylinder 50 times a second at 3000 rpm 
So to put that in perspective, like a lot of things, uh, it's hard to put specific sounds to, uh, you know, when the engine is running and everything, because a lot of things have a lot of different sounds and those, all of those sounds kind of muddy together. But if you can take noise out of the piston rocking back and forth 50 times a second at 3000 RPM, that's good stuff. You're, you're having a better fit. You're holding in more, more of the power, more of the, more of the combustion, you know, with a tighter fit, better ring fit, and it's quieter. So that's what you get when you buy high quality stuff is it's, it's better all the way around, right? That's why it's high quality is because it's better. So that's basically it. Just a fun little bit of information as far as the cylinder fit, you know? So just a little update. I'm gonna see if I can't get this back in that video and keep it going. All right, this is gonna be super hard to show, but I was having a hard time like determining what the difference is in between this high flow exhaust system that comes with the 131 kit and the stock exhaust system. I looked the kit up on the computer and it didn't really go into you know why this is like a high flow exhaust system so I was interested I was inter interested to know and they look almost identical but I measured the primary widths and that is all the same like the width of the pipe that's actually coming right out of the cylinder head and they are the identical width so those are the same and then I measured the collector and they're kind of the same too. It's hard to measure because they're like bent and formed pieces of metal, but they're basically the same. And the diameter of the catalytic converter is also the same along with the tailpiece. But then the difference is on the inside. Let's see if we can take a look. So this is a stock catalytic converter and you can kind of see that it's look at the distance between like the edge of the inside of here and where the honeycomb is you can see that like there's a big kind of like a edge or a liner in there maybe and that the honeycomb is I don't know maybe an inch down there just trying to get a better angle the Go GoPro LCD is only like two inches in diameter, so it's super hard to know if the camera is doing what you want. Let's take a look at the high flow one now. And then that's where it starts looking different. See the catalytic converter is like right up against that uh, crossover pipe. And this is where it goes to the left side of the motorcycle. And it's like attached in there to a, like its own, whoops. It's like attached, like, it's like there's two pieces of steel here. There's like the inner catalytic core, it looks like, and then this outer steel piece. But that must be where all the difference is, is just in the catalytic converter material because it's in there at a different location and it looks like it's attached almost in a different way interesting though alright so that really concludes the 131 kit and that's really everything that we wanted to see we wanted to see the quality and I said technology earlier because the I, I guess that's really the way that I kind of put this is uh, the differences in technology of the way the original parts made and the newer part and the original pistons and the new pistons and shapes and angles in the combustion chamber totally different stuff which is cool and then it's also nice that it comes with new badging as well because that was always a big deal back in the day is somebody buys a sweet engine kit and then like the derby cover would still say, you know, 96 or 103 or whatever the 
setup is. So this is a little insert that goes in this timer cover, which is cool. And the badging is also really nice on. It's upside down right now, but on the stage four. Nice little touches. And here's the kit for the 128. So this would be if you had a 107 crankshaft or like if your bike started out as a 107. This is a bolt-on 128 kit, which is very similar. The cylinder heads are the same with the same combustion chamber design and all of that. Maybe we'll get a different angle, better view on this cylinder head. And they also have the Screaming Eagle logo on the one head and stage four on the other. And the embossed Screaming Eagle, trying to get out of the light, and the embossed Screaming Eagle logo on the heads. So these are the same as the 131 kits. The camshafts are the same. The same high quality one piece, normal. I guess I say normal, but high quality cam, high quality made camshaft. Comes with a high flow header. Screaming Eagle lifters with the chubby rollers in there. The high flow four hole injectors. Same. Comes with the same timer insert. This has a little blue protectant covering on the 128, so it won't have that blue tint to it. But the 128 badging. The same throttle body and big boy throttle blade. The pistons are almost identical. The width of them like the circumference is the same as the 131 kit but the difference is where the wrist pin hole is in correlation to the top of the piston because that changes with uh, the length of the rod and all that business so you can't use these pistons in the 131 you can't use a 131 pistons in a 107 to 128 but the same high quality Mahel or however you'd say that piston the wide skirts and the same brand new cylinders so it's nice coming with brand new cylinders because like I was saying previously piston and cylinder fit is everything along with your cross hatch because the cross hatch holds the oil and that's what the, the piston slides up and down on is the oil so having a cross hatch that's too aggressive will wick oil away quicker and you won't have as much lubrication having a cross hatch that's too shallow will hold too much oil I believe that's the way it goes but having the, the cylinders bored perfectly like we were talking about we were talking about maybe yeah seven ten thousandths to maybe two thousandths on the big end is uh the actual cylinder fit so you got to be super precise whoever you have bore your bore your stuff realistically like if i have cylinders that i need bored i like to send them right to t-man performance He's got all the best stuff. He does a great job. They're always perfectly straight and true. Crosshatch is perfect. Like, you know, he has high-end machines. It's not like he's just like Joe Blow is hanging out with a ball hone, just like boring the shit out of everything. So that's what I'm talking about as far as it's nice to see a well-engineered kit with good quality stuff. So I think we already have somebody that's interested in doing the 128 kit and this one we're going to be putting on a motorcycle so i'll get some pictures of that that's it that's what we're talking about that's the 131 and the 128 kit i'm going to get the motorcycle rolled up over here 
and get things cleaned up and some of this stuff kind of put away. But we're going to get going on that, putting this kit together, seeing how it goes. Thanks for watching.